The Maxabeam Searchlight Force Protection Kit provides a rapidly deployed long-range illumination asset to force protection personnel. Since most force protection requirements occur at night, this kit greatly expands your zone of threat detection and identification, while providing you with a non-lethal option for dealing with potential intruders. This kit has the capability of providing continuous operation of the searchlight since the charger battery combination allows for a fully charged battery to always be available before the battery in use is discharged. This searchlight is intended for use in outside spaces only. It is not recommended for use in confined spaces or voids where flammable or explosive atmospheric conditions may exist. This searchlight is not compatible with older Gen 1 night vision goggles, PVS-5As. Do not use with these older model NVDs as potential eye damage and or NVD equipment malfunction may result. A naval message, DTG R141501Z, November 2000, recalling and replacing the PVS-5As has been released. The Maxabeam searchlight is lightweight at only 3.5 pounds and 8.8 .8 pounds when combined with the battery and yet can illuminate targets at over 1.5 miles away in visible light and with the provided MBA 1850 IR filter it enhances NVG systems at ranges up to 1,000 yards providing earlier target detection and identification. The heart of the system is a long-life xenon short arc lamp. This is the same as the source used in the helicopter searchlights, only scaled down for handheld use. The actual source of light is an arc of electricity that creates a plasma ball of light inside an arc chamber while under a high pressure atmosphere of xenon gas. Your force protection kit includes three MBP-1207 batteries. These are 12-volt DC NICAD batteries with a 7 amp hour capacity. These batteries are shipped discharged and must be charged before use. Your force protection kit comes with two MBP-5200 quick chargers and two universal AC power supplies. These units will operate the MBP-5200 charger on any AC line power from 100 to 250 volts at either 50 or 60 cycles. In addition to the AC power modules, the kit also includes two DC power cords that can be powered from any typical vehicle receptacle at any voltage from 12 to 36 volts DC. Caution: Observe the polarity, plus at the tip and minus at the sleeve. This DC power adapter has a red power indicator light and is protected by a fuse in the connector. If the indicator light does not come on, check the power source and then check the fuse. Always use a 3AG 8 amp replacement fuse. To attach the battery to the search light, place the round feet on the search light into the round holes on the top of the battery. Slide the search light towards the connector end of the battery until it latches into place. Push the searchlight forward to see if it is properly latched. If it is, the searchlight will not move. All the DC power connections in the Maxibeam system work in the same way. To make a power connection, line up and rotate the connectors until the keys line up and the connectors slide together. Then, rotate the retainer collar firmly clockwise until the connectors are fully engaged. Never force the connectors. Connect the correct power input adapter to the charger and connect it to your power source. The indicator light will turn red. Place the battery on top of the charger. Do not slide the battery onto the charger contacts. The end of the battery with the power connector should be at the end of the charger with the pigtail output connector. The indicator light will turn from red to flashing yellow indicating the maintenance charge has started. Next, connect the male end of the charger's pigtail to the battery connector. The indicator light will turn steady yellow. When connected to the quick charger this way, 
Rapid charge has begun and the battery can be recharged in two and a half hours. When the indicator light turns steady green, the battery is charged and may be removed from the charger. If the battery is left on the charger, with or without the charger's output connector connected, the charger will switch to a maintenance charge rate, which will keep the battery fully charged as long as there is power to the charger. If you have no other batteries to charge, disconnect the power tail from the charger and reconnect the power cord from the light to the battery. At this point, the light and battery are ready for rapid deployment, but the charge will be maintained through the contacts between the bottom of the battery and the charger. All of the searchlight's functions can be controlled by the same hand that holds the light. The momentary contact red button turns the light on and off. The black square button is the beam conditioning switch. It is a joystick that can be rocked in all four directions. When rocked forward, the beam will zoom tighter. When rocked to the rear, the beam will zoom out wider. When rocked to the right, the light will go to high beam. This function can be programmed either to latch for a preset time period. Pushed again, the beam will go back to normal brightness. Or it can be a momentary function that will stop when the switch is allowed to return to the center. When the switch is rocked to the left, the pre-programmed function of either low beam, known as battery saver mode, or the strobe mode is activated. The strobe can be programmed to latch or to operate on a momentary basis. The strobe mode comes pre-programmed but can also be customized for both frequency and duration of flash. To turn on the searchlight, Momentarily press the red power button. The searchlight will make a sparking noise and will light. If it does not light within five seconds, press the red power button again to stop the process and then try again. When the searchlight lights, it will come on at high power for about three seconds to warm up the lamp and then will step down to normal power. Many people that use the Maxi Beam on long patrols prefer to carry the weight on their shoulder. This is easily done by attaching the shoulder strap to two of the four points provided on the battery. When the light is needed, it can be released from the battery quickly. Just grab the light by the handle and slide your hand back until your little finger finds the locking trigger release. Squeeze up on the trigger and push the light forward. The light will slide about three quarters of an inch forward and then lift off the battery. The coily cord will allow you to use the light freely while the weight is still on your shoulder. Maxibeam filters are designed to snap quickly and securely onto the front of the Maxibeam searchlight. Your force protection kit includes three add-on filters. They are the MBA 2005 protective lens, which is shipped on the Maxibeam, and should always be installed on the Maxibeam when no other filter is in use. It protects the front lens from breakage. The MBA 1850 covert infrared filter, which allows only the IR above 850 nanometers to pass through. This filter provides illumination for night vision systems and infrared sensitive cameras and the MBA 1500 fog and smoke filter. This is an amber filter which increases visible lights penetration in some fog and smoke conditions. The MBA 1850 and the MBA 1500 are shipped in their protective padded storage pouches. They should be kept in these pouches anytime they are not in use. To remove any filter, grasp the light in one hand while gripping the filter as shown. Twist the filter in a clockwise direction about three quarters of an inch, then pull the filter away from the light. To mount a filter, grasp the light in one hand while gripping the filter as shown. Line up the three lugs on the filter ring with the three cavities on the light's lens ring. 
push the filter firmly and evenly onto the light about a quarter of an inch all the way around. And then twist the filter ring in a counterclockwise direction for about three quarters of an inch. Pull the filter away from the light to make sure it is locked in position on the light's lens ring. Some 5000 series chargers are shipped with vertical mounting options added. And the batteries are also modified to work in rough surface and vertical mounting situations. To engage the battery, always set the connector end of the battery into the charger first. Then slide it back to line up the connector end's keeper. Then lower the rest of the battery down onto the contacts and press the front keeper on the battery into the spring steel latch on the charger. Always connect the safety retainer strap and make sure it is cinched down by pulling the white label away from the buckle. The light with the battery can be removed from the vertical mount easily. First grab the light with your right hand and release the safety retainer strap with a firm squeeze of your thumb and forefinger on the buckle latches. Next, while still holding the handle with your right hand, push down on the edge of the retainer clip with your left thumb. The light system will come free and you are ready to use your Maxibeam searchlight. The lamp focus may have changed in shipment and should be checked. Focus the searchlight's beam on a flat, light-colored surface about 50 feet away. Set the beam to a small spot by rocking the beam conditioning switch back and forth. The spot should be centered within the searchlight's beam. If it is not, using the tool supplied with the searchlight, remove the screws covering the lamp adjustment ports. One on the right front side of the main body and one just left of the front of the handle. Insert the tool into one of the focusing access ports. A slight rotation and or side to side motion may be required until the tool is properly seated in the adjustment screw. The adjustment screw on the top moves the light up and down and the one on the side moves the light side to side. Turn the tool to center the hotspot in the beam. Repeat this procedure for the other adjustment screw. Replace the focus access screws and washers when the focusing is complete. Do not over tighten the screws. Snug is good enough. Key point. Adjacent to side focusing port is a rubber grommet containing a gore valve. Do not tamper with this valve in any way. This valve is there to equalize the pressure in the light to minimize the possibility of moisture infiltration. Tampering with this valve in any way could compromise the light's weather tightness. Your Maxibeam batteries are not prone to NICAD memory problems, but should a battery fail to operate the searchlight for 90 minutes in normal mode, it can be reconditioned by placing it on the MVP5200 and connecting the charger's pigtail to the battery. Next, push the green button. The indicator light will start flashing green as the discharge cycle starts. The charger will become noticeably hotter during this cycle. When the discharge cycle is complete, the charger will automatically start charging the battery and the indicator light will go steady yellow. When the battery is charged, the indicator light will go steady green and your battery is ready for use. The Maxibeam Searchlight provides a great deal of operational flexibility by allowing you to modify the operational characteristics of the Searchlight with some simple programming sequences. This capability allows you to customize the light for the mission at hand. For an example, if you want to use the light for an extended search operation in a wooded area, you could set the light so that when you start the light it would come on in battery saver mode with a wide beam. Please remember, all of these programming sequences have to be done after the light has been turned on and the warm-up cycle of 3 to 5 seconds has occurred. For the first example, let's set the light so that it automatically goes to battery saver mode after it turns on. First, turn the light on, wait 3 to 5 seconds until the warm-up cycle is complete. Then with the light on, push down the red button and hold it down. 
and then move the beam conditioning switch first to the left, then to the right, and then simultaneously let go of both the beam conditioning switch and the red button. The next time you turn the light on, it will come on three to five seconds for the warm-up and automatically drop down to battery saver mode. In this mode, the light will run for about two hours on a fully charged battery. Next, let's set the light to start up in the normal mode. This is the factory setting. Turn the light on, allow the warm-up cycle to occur, then with the light on, push down and hold the red button, and then rock the switch to the left, then to the right, back to center, and then to the right again, then simultaneously to release both switches. The next time you turn on the light, the light will come on to the warm-up cycle and automatically drop to the normal mode. The light will run in this mode for about 90 minutes. Next, let's set the light to start up in strobe mode. This might be particularly useful to someone on sentry duty. First, turn the light on, allow the warm-up cycle to occur, and then with the light on, push down and hold the red button, and then rock the beam conditioning switch to the left, and then to the right, and then to the right again, and then to the right again, then simultaneously releasing both switches. You turn the light on, it will come on for three to five seconds in the warm-up mode, and immediately go directly to strobe. To come out of strobe, push the rocker switch once to the left, and the light will go back to normal mode. To go back to strobe, push the switch one more time to the left, and it will go back to latching strobe mode until you once again cycle it back to normal. To restore the factory settings at any time, follow the procedures at the bottom of page 9. First, turn the light on, allow the warm-up cycle to occur, and then with the light on, push down and hold the red button, and then rock the beam conditioning switch forward, and then to the right, and then to the back, and then to the left, and then forward again, and then simultaneously releasing both buttons. The next time you turn on your light, all the factory settings will be restored. For more information about the use and care of your Maxibeam, including the in-field serviceable parts in your spares kit, please consult your operation manual.